Hey there everyone, this is Leo over from Tech Lion. I'm actually going to be doing a computer upgrade today for my main PC. That's right, my main gaming computer is finally getting an update after oh, a couple of years. And what we're going to be adding to this computer is actually going to be a new processor. I'm upgrading from my AMD 3600 to my AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D, and it is now the top of the line gaming processor that I could possibly put into this motherboard. So this is also going to be a somewhat of a tutorial as to how to upgrade the BIOS that are on your motherboard and install the new processor onto the motherboard as well. Now for some stats about the processor upgrade that we're going through over here, we're actually going to be getting just a few more cores and a couple of more threads, and even the boost clock is only going to be just slightly more elevated. But as we always see here, the cache is being tripled, which is going to be amazing for gaming performance, which of course is going to require just a bit more juice out of my power supply, but I've got a 750 watt power supply, more than enough to power this entire system. Now the key night of you might have noticed that I'm also going to be upgrading the RAM as I'm going to be going from a 16 gig set of 266 megahertz RAM to a 3200 set, which is what my motherboard supports, as you can see over here. So what we're going to have to do is really just kind of go into the support menu here. And if we scroll down a bit, we could actually find ourselves that they had their BIOS listed. And we see the F52H, which is going to be for us in order to upgrade this specific motherboard over to the latest version. And from there, we can extract it and put it into a flash drive because this does allow us to simply just go right into the BIOS through the flash drive that's over here and actually update it from right within this menu. If we would open this up and click over into Q flash, we can see that it does detect our current version, which is F52D. And we just select the nice update BIOS button that we have right here in the middle of the screen. And it's going to show us the flash drive that I do have plugged in. We just select the proper firmware version, select the name. And this is the kind of part where you always have to cross your fingers and hope nothing wrong happens. Fortunately, a lot of good motherboards out there have BIOS flashbacks. So you don't have to worry about it. And we just kind of skip on ahead as this part just take about five minutes. I do recommend selecting to back up your BIOS. I forgot to when I clicked it and I realized it immediately afterwards. But fortunately, nothing went wrong. We just kind of let the update go on as far as it does. And we're right off to the races. And of course, once it's done with its update, it just kind of does a very quick reboot. And then we're right back over to the screen that we need to be. And of course it got its 100%. Quick countdown for the reboot. And we're right back over to this screen and always check the BIOS immediately. Go right back to the Q flash screen. And I do check to make sure that it is now at F. 52H, which is the version for my motherboard that allows it to detect the 5800X3D. Now I'll worry about a bunch of other settings later because right now what we're going to be doing is installing the processor and the RAM. First order of business for us is going to be going right inside of my tower. I like working while it's on its side, especially with any computer that I'm building, and we get a good look at the guts from the inside. Now, I do have a very large fan here, the Noctua NHD15 in Chromex Black. With the aesthetic little clips that are on the side. Now, don't worry about the dust that you do see all throughout the computer. I will be blowing this out a little bit later into the video, but I do recommend that if you are unlocking or going to be doing any kind of upgrades within your computer, give it a good cleaning. Also, save your screws here. Uh, I kept the screwdriver that I got with my Noctua cooler because I might be in here later. And of course I was. There it is, our RAM and processor. But first, like I was saying, when it comes to cleaning, I like to use an electric air cooler. Noise warning for all of y'all out there. We're about to get loud. Nice and clean. And the fans.
And not to mention we want to clean off any of the excess thermal paste that we have at the bottom of the unit as well. A simple cloth or a napkin should do the trick for this. And now let's get the RAM sticks out as well as the processor. And we're going to give it a good cleaning as well because most likely I'm thinking I might do another build using this processor and the RAM that I just took out of this machine. Uh, any suggestions from you guys out there as to what kind of computer I should make with these kind of pieces? Let me know in the comments below. Got to unpack this pair of 16 gig sticks of RAM. Beautiful, nice and red to match up with the aesthetics of my case and fans. And now let's get the 5800X3D out of here. This is actually a processor I bought during the Black Friday deals that were going on where the price was reduced by almost $100. So of course I had to jump in on it. And since the AM4 is end of life, best that I can get. It actually comes with the case that the stealth fan would usually come into, or the wraith fan that is, which it's just e-waste at that point. That's just going to go right into recycling. But there she is. Now let's actually get the RAM installed into the proper slots, which is going to be two and four for me. And a quick install of the processor itself. And just pull the lever right down, make sure that it clicks right into place. And I try to give it just a little bit of a wiggle afterwards to make sure it's not moving anywhere. Now for one of the things that everybody has their own method of doing, and that's going to be applying thermal paste. I like to stick to the whole pea size right into the middle of the processor kind of deal. However you want to do it is up to y'all. If you want to do the X or a percent sign, more power to you. I'll stick with the pea size. Now for, of course, getting this beast of a tower cooler right back onto this. I'll line it right up to the slot since the back brace is already on there. A couple of nice turns on each side. Don't want to tighten it too much on one side and then have troubles tightening down the other. And then, yeah, tighten back the other side afterwards. Give it a good wiggle to make sure it's in place. And the fans, of course, which, as you can see, this cooler does have some interesting fan clearance. You do need a wide case when you're using one of these. I like to use the screwdriver or a pair of chopsticks to help uh, push down the fan connectors as well. And we get the second fan in here. And get the aesthetic clips that magnetically lock right back on in so I can have that nice continuous red look of my... PC. And with that, we're good to go. Firing this PC up, we do see that we are given a warning that, hey, it detects a new processor. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see here. So we just kind of say yes, jump on in, and it lets us know that the BIOS have been reset. So everything is good to go with the processor and the RAM. We do just need to make sure that a couple of settings are correct. First of these settings is going to be going to the advanced frequency settings and making sure that XMP is enabled. This is going to make sure that our RAM is not running at the default 2400 megahertz that you see there. And it's actually going at the full 3200. Next, I just need to enable above 4G decoding, which is for some virtualization that I do, and resizable bar support, which is going to help just boost your performance just a little bit. And with that, we'll save and exit and get right into the computer. All right, at Windows here, we do see that the processor is up and running. It's kind of idling over at 36 Celsius, which is fine. We see that all 32 gigs of the RAM is being detected, and it is running at the proper speed of 3200 megahertz. So let's test some games. 
So we're going to go through a variety of games that I normally play, starting off with World of Warcraft Dragonflight. As we can see over here, we're going to be showing off 1080p results as well as 1440p results. And this is going to be one of those interesting ones, where when I tested it with the Ryzen 5 3600, I had no difference in frame rate between these two resolutions. It stayed somewhere around the low 40s in these kind of a hectic, giant outdoor raid boss scenarios. But the moment I plugged in this processor, we could see a huge spike in performance, averaging 100 frames per second within these giant areas. And at 1440, which is what I normally play at, we're kind of averaging around the low 80s, which is perfectly fine for an MMO setting. And for another Blizzard title, we're going to be going with Overwatch 2, a game that did just come out recently as of this video. With the 3600, we're going from 1080p, 174 FPS, to 1080p, 220 FPS, up to 5800 X3D. But at the frame rate that I play at, which is going to be at the 1440p resolution, I'm averaging at about 160 when it comes to the 5800 X3D, a big jump over the 122 of the 3600. Now for one of the games that I'm sure a lot of you folks are playing out there is going to be Warzone 2.0. And in the Battle Royale mode, we're averaging from around 1080p, 70 frames per second, at high settings, to 130. That's right, at 1080p, 130 FPS, at high settings, fantastic. And at 1440p, we're going from 55 FPS, which is a little too low for me, to 110. That's right, we doubled in frame rate in Warzone 2.0 with just a processor upgrade. And that's how you know this thing has some juice in it. And now for another competitive shooter, Apex Legends, which is probably going to be showing you the most interesting graph in this entire benchmark suite. It's going to show you that our frame rate did not change at all, regardless of the processor that was being used. And this is a very good point about this, because if you ever check out programs like MSI Afterburner, you can actually see where your bottleneck is. With an Apex Legends, I always see that my video card is actually running at 100% the entire time in Apex, whereas my processor isn't really being used as much. So that's a very good thing that you want to double check whenever you're seeing the games that you're normally playing, and to see where your bottleneck really lies. And now for the last game within our benchmark suite, it's going to be a brand new title that just came out. It's going to be Warhammer 40k Darktide, a sequel to the Vermintide series of Warhammer games, this time set up into the long distant future of the 41st millennia. Now this was another title that I played the beta about a month ago and I went, I gotta upgrade my computer. I was averaging roughly within even low settings, mid 40s, mid 50 frames. If we see even over here for comparisons, the Ryzen 5 3600 was going at about 43 frames per second, up to 38 at 1440p. But the moment that I jumped up to my Ryzen 7 5800X3D, we went 1080p, 100 FPS average, 1440p, 80 FPS average. We more than doubled our performance going to a processor upgrade with this title, and I'm more than happy with the kind of performance that I'm getting out of this game with my friends. And it's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope a lot of you found this pretty informative about BIOS updates, updating your processor, updating your RAM, and the kind of gaming performance you could have from just upgrading your processor for the most part. And let me know what you think I should be doing with an old processor and RAM that I have. I might just build a whole new computer using those pieces. If you have any other questions, ask down below into the comments. And of course, like and subscribe. Until next time, bye.